Okay, Elo Kai. Neshama shenasata vita oirahi. You're not going to believe this, but the soul that you've been given is pure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never seen you laugh quite like that before. Ata varosa, ata yitzata, ata nefachta bi. You created it, you formed it, you put it inside of me. Va'ata mishamra bekibin, you're going to keep it inside of me. Va'ata osid litlo and you're going to take it away from me ultimately. Velach zira bil osid lovay, and then it's going to be returned to me in the time of tchias amesim, in the time of the resurrection of the dead. Kol zman shanashamra bekibi, the whole time that my neshamra is inside of me. Moid ani lefanech Hashem elokai velokai avosai, I thank you, God. Ribon kol amasim adon kol anashamois. That we thank God for having given us back our neshamas. Hold, hold on, I, I just let me let me let me just get going over here. Before you can't speak if you've got food in your mouth, so you just keep chewing, okay? Um, no. 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 <clears throat> just, just one minute. The, the, the most incredible idea over here, which I, I want I want you to just to try to understand it clearly because it really is absolutely astonishing. We say the, the, the soul that you've been given by God is pure. The rabbis teach us like this, that when you go to sleep at night, um, your neshama is taken up to the shamayim, into, into the heavenly spheres, and it's cleansed of the sins that it accumulated over the day. Even so, however bad the sin oh, Hold on a second. I can, see, I can already see the way your mind is working. Just one minute. It's not that. It's not that simple. Hope for me in the end, then. No, no, there isn't. No. You're English. No, any sin... Hey guys, do I have a TV just looking at what? Not more than usual, no. <laughs> um, what, what's the idea? Listen carefully, it's the most beautiful idea. <clears throat> God cleanses your soul. Every night God cleanses your soul and then puts it back inside of you the next morning in a state of purity. Why is that? Because, <laughs> why is that? Because imagine if God didn't do that and after... 20 years of living here in this world, you decide that you want to do tshuva, you want to draw closer to God, there'll be such an accumulation of sin around your soul that will be almost impossible to penetrate it. What's well, did I finish yet? Sorry. <clears throat> and shouldn't God be able to penetrate anything? God, yes, but not you. Yeah. Which means that you, you need, you know, to go through a process of tshuva, everybody here knows as well as I do. To go through a process of tshuva requires a consistent approach. You've got to want to do tshuva. That's the most basic dimension of all. You've got to want to be connected to God. <coughs> Which means that if my soul is coated with years worth of things that I shouldn't have done, how on earth am I going to tap back into that soul in order to connect to God? <coughs> so far, so good. So what does God do? Every night, He cleanses your soul and gives it back to you in the morning, your job is to keep your soul clean. Right? You've been given a brand, not brand new, but you've been given a pristine, clean soul when you woke up this morning. And the only thing that you've got to do is keep it clean. It's like putting on a white shirt for Shabbat, right? And, and sitting down at the Friday night meal and trying not to get chrain all down it. No. <laughs> very difficult. Very, very difficult. Very I know, I know. <clears throat> but it's doable. Especially if you wear a garbage bag, you know, wrapped around you three times or something. Then maybe that'll keep the stain off the shirt. I don't know, but you, so you're here. Spiritual garbage bag? Hold, hold, hold on a second. No, no, you're taking this too literally. Hold on a second. <clears throat> hold on a second, right? It's the most incredible chesed from God. You wake up in the morning, you don't have to battle with trying to tap into your inner self, into your inner being, into your more spiritual dimension, because it's all nice and clean and ready for you to connect together with God. Where's the catch over here? The catch is that when God cleanses your soul, each night, He's not, he's not cleansing your soul and the sins are disappearing. That's not what's going on. He's but rather, the sins the are being in a book. In, in some people's cases, they're going into a hangar, I imagine, <laughs> together with all the other sins that they've accumulated. <clears throat> and there are like barrels and barrels and barrels of these things with your name on it. And, uh, and which means like this, that if a person does tshuva on Yom Kippur, Alex, you're listening to me, if you do tshuva on Yom Kippur, then all of the sins that have accumulated inside of the barrel will be removed. They'll be taken care of. But if not, then 
they'll be stored away and at some point a person's going to have to give an accounting for all that accumulation of sin. Which means that the idea over here of Elokani Shamashan Asatami Tori, that our soul is pure, is that we're stating it's a statement of fact. You get up in the morning, your soul is pure. All you've got to do right now is work on keeping it that way. <clears throat> Afterwards, if you want to work on the accumulation of all the things that you've done over the space of the last week and the last month and the last year and whatever it is. So that's something that can be taken care of slowly, but surely it doesn't have to be done on Yom Kippur. It can be done throughout the year, but that's a different process altogether. That's a process of tshuva. Okay, Ben, what do you want? Whenever you started reciting the bracha, yeah. the, the prayer here, you said Elokai. I noticed that whenever you say Elokai instead of the regular word, yeah. um, you, su you switch the letter hey for um, a cup. Yeah. Why, cool. do you, why do you switch it? Why, why is that? Okay, cup? good. I, I don't know. It's a good question. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. There, there is, there is a a custom not to pronounce God's <laughs> name, right. unless it's going to be said with inside of verses of Torah or inside of prayer, right? So what do we do? We change instead of instead of reciting. I'm going to say it now, just to make this clear to everybody. Instead of saying Elohai, with a hey, we say Elokai. And you want to know why it's a kuf and not any anything else? I don't know. I really don't. Um. Maybe because maybe because the Hey and the Kuf, they they have the same sound to them, right? Elokai, Elohai. Right? It's got it's clear what you're saying, and it's clear that you've changed it for a particular reason. Maybe that's the reason why. Right, but if you used a Chet, be... Elohai, maybe. I don't know. You're right. I don't know. Well, you can turn a Hey into a Kuf just by sending the line over. No, that's a Chet. Nope, that's a Kuf. Oh, is that you think that's the reason? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Okay. You know what? That's hey. interesting. The way that you yeah. write a hey, hey. right? I don't hear what? He's writing it in cursive. Yeah, is that? Is that? Okay. Here we've got we've got a. That's a hey. Okay, that's a hey. And if you make it a chet. No, make it. If you, he's making it a kuf when he says it. No, so who he's saying if you make it a chet, all you're doing is you're just joining it up over there instead of dropping it down over there. That's yeah. all. That's all. I mean, you're right. It's, okay, it's a possibility. Well, we've we've got a. Kuf we've, or a kuf. No, it's a kuf. It's, it's a kuf. kuf. It's a kuf. Not a kuf. No, it's a kuf. We, we've got a we've got a, a a possible explanation over here, but of course it's it's based in divrei kabbalah. Um, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not so even sure nice. if I, maybe if all of you put your fingers in your ears and then I will, I will then tell you over what's being said. But he said like this, Kuf is in Gematria, in numerical values, Kuf is a hundred. A hundred represents God. It's a totality of something. So may, maybe that's the reason. I don't, I don't know. Probably not. <clears throat> don't, don't say that after I've just explained what you said. <laughs> that's not, <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> Okay, here, let's have a look and see what we've got. We've got, on page number 18, we've got a series of brachas, 18 and 20. We've got a sit. Does anybody know how many brachot there are in Birkat HaShachar? Ten. <clears throat> 118. <laughs> this is like an auction. Any advance on 118? 618. 618. We've got 613 over there for the person in the blue shirt. 613. 120. We've got 120. 100. Am I, am I Jewish holy numbers? <laughs> 11. <clears throat> there are 11, Baruch 18. Hashem, you did not turn over the page because you find a few more on the other page as well. Wait, there are 15. Well, it's like, it's incredible. This is like, it's not, this 16. is like a, yeah, somebody, somebody, I once, I once asked this in a, in a class setting and somebody said, there are 28 because 28 in gematria, in numerical values, is, means koach, which means power, <laughs> which is really, it's beautiful. It's not true, <laughs> but it, it's very, it's, it's a very beautiful idea for sure. There are 15 Can I blessings. Can you on that? Well, <clears throat> yeah. is that there are 15, but... In deeper, in the it, deeper, in, in the black it. and white understanding, yes, right? The, the, uh, actually, you should know the black and white, it says, it says in, the, in, the, in the Zohar, it says that when God gave the Torah, it was black fire wit written on white fire, which means the concepts of black and white really are Kabbalistic concepts. Uh, the idea of black, you know, black fire being something which has got a certain something inside of it. White fire is something which has got a purity to it. 
Um, Maybe just because of how it's printed on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> I want to cut it out. <sighs> Have another cookie. <laughs> There, there are 15, <coughs> there are 15, <laughs> well, it's okay, we don't have too much time left. Hopefully it'll keep him quiet till the end. There are, <laughs> there are 15 blessings inside of Birkat Shacha. Why are there 15 blessings? Because there were 15 stairs that took you up into the temple where the temple worship began in the mornings. But that was <clears> the ramp. No, that's going up to the altar. Oh, right. <clears> going up to the area, the temple area, there were 15 steps. What are those 15 steps? What was going on? It was very beautiful. Is anybody here a lady? Uh, can I guess why there's 15? Of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, the 12 tribes of Israel plus, plus the three forefathers. Why are they called forefathers when there's only three of them? What do you mean? Huh? Uh, huh? Uh, why are they called uh, forefathers when there's uh, only three of them? Huh? You're thinking of... There are four three mothers. because no, there are four. The first, God, the first father was Hashem himself. Ooh. Ooh. I know, that sounds Ooh. remarkably Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Christian to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I don't know, I'm that sounds... Because, uh, yeah, I, just, I, I don't actually think that that's the reason. I was just... But it's very beautiful, and it's very Kabbalistic. It's just a very typical type of explanation. <laughs> there, are, there are 15 steps that go take you up into where <laughs> the temple worship began in the morning. Every step you take, if, every, if anybody here was a Levi, the Levian were famous for their musical ability. Right? They, had, they sang and they played musical <laughs> instruments, and the, the worship in the temple began every morning at dawn with the same thing. The Levian would stand on the first step of these 15 steps and sing the first chapter of Tehillim that begins with the words Shir HaMa'alot. There are 15 chapters in Tehillim, in Psalms, that begin with the words either Shir HaMa'alot or Shir Le Ma'alot, which literally means the Song of Ascents. Very good, right? Yeah. The, song, the Song of Ascents, the Song of the Stairs. The Levian would stand on the first stair and sing the first Shir HaMa'alot, then they would move up onto the second stair and they would sing the next one and the third one and the fourth one. They would get to the tenth one and they would stop, make a pause, and then they would start moving up the last five. The reason for that, explain the commentaries, is because the number 15 in numerical values is Yud and He. Oh. A Yud is ten, He is five. Yud and He spell out God's name. The idea of number 15, it's a very basic number to understanding all kinds of Jewish concepts. But However, yeah. Huh? Yeah, you need the vav. Yeah, you don't have vav. No, the, the yud, yud, the, the God's name of yud, hey, and vav, vav hey. I mean, hey, yud is the, sh is the shorthand <laughs> for Hashem. No. Hey with a little apostrophe. Hey. With a, no, it, 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 it's like this. <clears throat> Again, in Kabbalistic terms, Yud, He, Vav, He, which is the four-letter name of God, is really comprised of two, two dimensions. The Yud, He is a spiritual dimension, and the Vav, He is the dimension that's more physical, something which is found down here in the more physical realms. The Vav, interestingly enough, a, I don't know, anybody here speak Hebrew? You know, you know what a Vav is? In Hebrew, aside from a letter, aside from the Hebrew letter, a vav is a hook. Oh, yeah. Right? Because it looks like a hook, right? It, you, you screw it up onto the wall and you've got the piece coming down and the piece that sticks out. The vav and the he are the more physical dimensions where we can tap into God through the physicality of the world. The yud and the he are the dimensions of God which are in the spiritual realms and uh, something which is a lot harder to tap into. The, the, it's like the, the essence of God is the Yud and the He. When we're in the temple, the, uh, we're going to be tapping into the more yud He dimension of God rather than the vav He dimension of God. There are 15 steps, 15 songs of Shir HaMalot, which the Levim sang. It actually says that if you would have been there at the beginning of the service, you would listen to them singing the first Shir HaMalot, you would have said how beautiful it was. Then you would have heard them sing the second one and say, wow, you know, that was, that was even better. And the third one, by the time you got to the third or the fourth, it was like, wow, this can't get any better. And each one was more and more beautiful until they got to the 15th step and the 15th Shir HaMalot. And then at that point, the Kohanim would take over the worship. They would begin the process of the Korbanot in the morning and they would start the process of what was known as the Avoida 
inside of the Bet HaMikdash. <laughs> Were people known to fall asleep while waiting for them to get the the performance? I was just no. thinking, that's a long no. time. How long is it would it take to do fifteen songs? Probably took a while. I don't know. I don't I don't Three know any source which hours. says how long how long it takes. But uh, whatever. They're, they're all pretty short. Right? They're all pretty short. So it's not you know, we're not talking about uh... anyway, Rabbi said we're gonna stop over here, but there are fifteen brochas in Birsa Shacha because we don't have a temple. So these 15 brachot are going to take the place of those 15 stairs. They're going to be our entry into the beginning of the way that we pray to God in the morning. Why, why do we do the short brachas instead of the uh, songs then? Well, in it, Hashem, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I would, no, I mean, I, I would like to answer the question, but Rabbi Ullman was... Just in here. Bleeneder. Yes, Rabbi Ullman was bleenadering around over here. <laughs>